The world is changing very fast. Big will not beat small anymore. It will be the fast beating the slow. Great journalism will always attract readers. The words, pictures and graphics that are the stuff of journalism have to be brilliantly packaged, they must feed the mind and move the heart. In motivating people, you've got to engage their minds and their hearts. I motivate people, I hope, by example, and perhaps by excitement, by having productive ideas to make others feel involved. I'm considered homophobic and crazy about these things and old-fashioned, but I think that the family, father, mother, children, is fundamental to our civilization. I'm not an economist and we all know economists were created to make weather forecasters look good. Bury your mistakes. If the head man in a company is not working 12 hours a day, doing things, taking risks, but also standing with his people in the trenches at the most difficult of times, then the company loses something. My worry about the New York Times is that it's got the only position as a national elitist general interest paper. So the network news picks up its cues from the Times, and local papers do too. It has a huge influence, and we'd love to challenge it. I try to keep in touch with the details. I also look at the product daily. That doesn't mean you interfere, but it's important occasionally to show the ability to be involved. It shows you understand what's happening. People who watch Fox News, you may say, and this is anecdotal, but they are passionate about it. In the most unlikely places, like down in Soho where I used to live, people would come up to me and thank me for it. People I didn't know from a bar of soap. People appreciate that at least they're being heard. It is much more watchable. As an immigrant, I chose to live in America because it is one of the freest and most vibrant nations in the world. And as an immigrant, I feel an obligation to speak up for immigration policies that will keep America the most economically robust, creative and freedom-loving nation in the world. From the beginning on, newspapers have prospered for one reason, giving readers the news that they want. The buck stops with the guy who signs the checks. ESPN is a very, very good operation, and it's a gold mine. It's an even bigger gold mine than Fox News. When you're a catalyst for change, you make enemies, and I'm proud of the ones I've got. When I hear something going wrong, I insist on it being put right. Advances in the technology of telecommunications have proved an unambiguous threat to totalitarian regimes everywhere. I was born in Australia and am proud of my Australian provenance, but I am now an American. Like so many naturalized citizens, I felt that I was an American before I formally became one. If you're in the media, particularly newspapers, you are in the thick of all the interesting things that are going on in a community, and I can't imagine any other life that one would want to dedicate oneself to. People are playing games on their TV, young men are, and people are shopping, they are not watching their news channels, but they are using their TVs for other things. Journalists should think of themselves as outside the establishment, and owners can't be too worried about what they're told at their country clubs. Money is not the motivating force. It's nice to have money, but I don't live high. What I enjoy is running the business. I'm not a knee-jerk conservative. I passionately believe in free markets and less government, but not to the point of being a libertarian. I'm not looking for a legacy, and you'll never shut up the critics. I've been around 50 years. When you're a catalyst for change, you make enemies, and I'm proud of the ones I've got. Online advertising is increasingly only a fraction of what is being lost from print advertising, and it is under constant pressure. It's been a long career and I've made some mistakes along the way. People begin to resent the rich only when they conclude that the system is rigged. I would like to be remembered, if I am remembered at all, as being a catalyst for change in the world, change for good. Satellite broadcasting makes it possible for information-hungry residents of many closed societies to bypass state-controlled television channels. I think a newspaper should be provocative, stir em up, but you can't do that on television, it's just not on. You can't build a strong corporation with a lot of committees and a board that has to be consulted every turn. You have to be able to make decisions on your own. I think you have a danger of regulating, putting regulations in place which will mean there will be no press in 10 years to regulate. I don't mind what people say about me, I've never read a book about myself. At its core, a fair and just society is one where opportunity is open to all, not just those at the top. No leader will fight for values, for principles, 
if their government is a value-free vacuum. Moral relativism is morally wrong. I'm a catalyst for change. You can't be an outsider and be successful over 30 years without leaving a certain amount of scar tissue around the place. I think everyone's against abortion. Climate change has been going on as long as the planet is here, and there will always be a little bit of it. The CNN International is a different service, it is even more leftist and anti-American than CNN is. That's their business, that's fine, but it can't be getting any revenue. There is no cable network that I know of anywhere in the world other than in America that pays them for their products. What's just about a generation of people who rack up government debt for their own health care and retirement, while leaving their children and grandchildren to foot the bill? I now wear a jawbone. This is a bracelet that keeps track of how I sleep, move and eat, transmitting that information to the cloud. It allows me to track and maintain my health much better. Our reputation is more important than the last hundred million dollars. Thankfully, Australia has emerged from its inauspicious colonial beginnings to become a proud nation, a nation that overcame those primeval prejudices. I felt that it's best just to be as transparent as possible. The digital native doesn't send a letter to the editor anymore. She goes online and starts a blog. I was brought up in a publishing home, a newspaper man's home, and was excited by that, I suppose. I saw that life at close range and, after the age of 10 or 12, never really considered any other. In my life, I have learned that most people want the same thing. They are not driven by class resentment. What they want most is to make a better life for themselves and their families, and to know that the opportunities for their children will be better than they were for themselves. No one's going to be able to operate without a grounding in the basic sciences. Language would be helpful, although English is becoming increasingly international. And travel, you have to have a global attitude. We all know growth is absolutely vital to a free society. No one should want Australia to be a stagnation, a nation with a stagnant economy and stagnant aspirations. It's a libel to say that I use my newspapers to support my other business interests. The fact is, I haven't got any other business interests. Visit our website for more quotes. Quoting.com